Okay, so in this week's episode of Make It With Calvin, I'm down here at my parents' house, and I figured I would talk to you guys a little bit about how to print flexibles on your Artillery 3D Sidewinder X1, because I keep seeing a bunch of people asking about how to do it, and it's really not as hard as you think it is. So, let's talk about it. Okay, so the most common questions I see on the page are, what do I need to print flexible filaments with? And does anybody have a profile that I can print flexible filaments with? Well, on my machine running the Micro Swiss Nozzle and the Titanium TH3D heat break and the flex plate, but that's another story. Only thing I need to print flexible filaments is the flexible filament itself. And I'm not, I'm not making that up literally. I'm printing flexible filaments on the machine as it is. I've also printed it successfully with the machine using the PTFE lined hot end as well. Now a couple of things to keep in mind when working with the flexible filaments is they are very loose, they are very floppy, and if you do upgrade your heat break, make sure that your piece of tubing is the correct length or you will have problems with this feeding into the hot end. Now, another thing that I will make mention of is if you've been running any kind of PLA, ABS, PETG, anything that is not a flexible filament in here, I highly recommend carefully using the little extruder lever here, pulling that back and just manually putting the filament in, and then with the hot end cranked up to about 10 to 20 degrees C higher than your filament, your previous filament normally runs at just carefully use the gear here to manually purge the system. Do that until it is clearly flowing the flexible filament, then drop the temperature to normal printing temperatures and prime some more. It's better to take an extra few minutes and maybe an extra couple inches of filament and prime it more than you think you need to because there might be some buildup inside that's not showing up. It's a lot easier than a failed print. Now, one other thing that I've noticed is that there is a lot of resistance running the flexible filament through the filament sensor. So I've just taken a piece of filament and stuck it in there to trip the sensor. Um, obviously, you do lose function of the filament sensor, but for most of the flex prints that I'm doing, which in this case are some small little GoPro boxes that I'll do another video on, it does not really matter. Now when it comes to the print surface, in this case, this is the TH3D Easy Flex plate with their PEI sheet. It does work printing flexibles on PEI, although I will say I sadly have a couple of spots where the flexible has actually bonded too much to the PEI, which is my own fault. I really should have put down a thin layer of glue stick or Magigoo or something like that to act as a mold release on here as flexibles tend to weld themselves to a lot of engineered build surfaces. If you're running the super plate material or you're running a stock glass bed, I wouldn't really worry about it. Um, obviously follow your manufacturer's recommended specifications for the flexible filament temperatures. In this case, I'm running 3D Solutex um, 1.75 flexible filament. It runs at about PLA temps. It likes 220, it likes 60 on the bed. I could probably even print it on a cold bed. I just like using a warm one because it's less likely for the filament to want to warp. Now, when it comes to the profile on the slicer, I will just use my PLA profile in Simplify 3D. The only changes are for the hot end temperature. Normally, I ramp down from 220 to 190 C at about five to 10 degrees C a layer. In this case, I just keep it at 220 degrees Celsius the whole print. Cooling stays the same bed temp stays the same. The only other thing that I drop is the print speed. I found about 30 to 45 millimeters a second works good. 30 if I want more detail, 45 if I want to get the print done before it's the next century, because obviously with flexibles you have to print slower. But if you're not sure, start out a little bit slower, keep the temperatures the same, cooling can stay the same. It's really not that hard. Um, don't get frustrated though if the first few times you try using flexibles, it doesn't turn out the best. This stuff is definitely not the firmest. This stuff is definitely not the softest of the flexibles out there, but for my applications, it works just fine. 
If you can though, try and buy a sample of the filament and mess around with that to figure out what works. It's much more economical than buying a full spool and then realizing that, oops, it doesn't print so well. So I hope that helps you guys a little bit to figure out how to print flexibles on here. Just in general, flexibles are a little bit of a bear to print with, but I'll conclude this video with a time lapse of the printer doing a flexibles print and hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you found this useful. And as always, if you have any questions, um, please ask them down below and I'll do my best to either answer them directly or in a video and see you guys later. Thank you.